Another episode today, and on today's episode, I have another teammate, Braden Ueli. Welcome, Braden Ueli. Thanks for having me, bro. <laughs> I used that last time with Dolph. He was loving it. <laughs> <laughs> How you been, brother? How's preseason going? Yeah, it's been pretty tough, eh? But um, you know, home stretch now. Yeah, enjoying it now. Enjoying it now that it's t- time to trial. Yeah. Soon, so, man, there's been some tough sessions, eh? From compared to last year. Fighting some demons, that's for sure. <laughs> Honestly. I had died Toby Rudolph in last week and we were talking about preseason and man, it was funny, but you did mention, yeah, we're getting close to the games now and like just the, the difference between like preparing for a game compared to not preparing for a game, hey, how different is it? Yeah, you just you're just able to get up in the morning, you know, like <laughs> next week we're playing and it's like I, I'm actually gonna enjoy training today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love that. All that tough stuff's done now. At training. Um, all right, let's get into it, bros. Firstly, thanks for coming on the show. Um, mate, let's take it right back to where young Braden Hamlin, Hamlin Ueli. Uh, mate, where'd you grow up? I grew up in West Auckland, back in New Zealand. Yep. Um, Glen Eden was a suburb. Um, yeah, I, I owe a lot to that suburb. How was your, how was your childhood? No, it was good. Um, you know, mum and dad supported me throughout everything. They um, encouraged me to get into as many sports as I could. Yep. Um, Never tried rugby though. Everyone always asks me lately, did you, did you ever play rugby? No, nah, never, never rugby. Always play rugby. Always rugby league. league. I was like, I just don't, I don't know. Yeah, mum and dad. Oh, dad was a big league fan. So um, he just kept me in playing league and he played yeah. league himself. So yeah, never, never dabbled in the union. Really? Mm. I find that really interesting because, you know, the two years I spent over in New Zealand, obviously you learn like the All Blacks culture and the All Blacks over there are like gods. But I'm um, speaking to like the boys and teammates I had over there. They were all they all dabbled in union at some stage. Like a lot of them played uh, first fifteen. First fifteen, yeah, for schools. Is, so that. you never played first fifteen. No, nah, never. I just, yeah, it just never appealed to me. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> nah, I'll just I'll just play league on Saturdays and yep. see where that takes me. So who was your junior club? Junior club was uh, Glenora Bears. Yep, home of the mighty Bears. Yeah, yeah, nice. And uh, that was a good club. Good, yeah. good times back there. Yeah, real family club. You know, um, everyone just. You sort of knew everyone from um, premiers to juniors. They all had a had a relationship, and even the people behind the bar and, and tuck shop and that they all knew each other. So it was it was really really fun times. Yeah, I love that. So, what age did you start playing rugby league? My first game was four. Jeez. Yeah, four, and I was obviously probably still the biggest kid. <laughs> yeah, on the field. I was going to say, were you the big running boy back around, then? Running around with six year olds. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, my dad was my coach. Mad for the first game, so that was pretty special for me. Yeah, yeah, that that's mad. So you old boy loves his footy, eh? Yeah, froths it. Still Every, like, big follower now. Yeah, he's yeah. um still actually coaching back in New Zealand now. He coaches the women's footy over there. Um, bit of a difference for me. Um, hearing him as a coach and a dad nowadays. Yeah, I um, mean, you know, he's always trying to give me the feedback here and there, and I'm just like. <laughs> I just want a dad right now, man. <laughs> Especially after a loss. Like, I don't want to hear what yeah, I did yeah, wrong. Yeah. I just want a dad. Like, nah, but he's good. I, yeah, I, I love my dad. Yeah, that's hectic, bro. Um, all right. What was the team you supported as a kid? Did you follow the Warriors? Yeah, always. Always followed the Warriors as a Kiwi kid. Yep. Um, but also followed Penrith back when um, Reese Wesser. He was he was one of my favourite players back in the day. Uh, him, Preston Campbell, Luke Rooney, all in that team. Um, the Pulitzer brothers. Yeah, that was a big team for me, Penrith. Um, That's sick. Yeah, but Warriors definitely, you yep. know, have to watch those guys. Did you, when you were a young fellow, did you want to play NRL from a young age? Or did um, you have that dream or was it just you just loved the game? I think at a young age I just loved the game. I just loved what league brought for my life. You know, it was, it was a great way to meet new mates and um, new relationships. And um, I probably didn't realise the potential that it could have been a, it could be a career until I was maybe under 16s yeah and that's when I wanted to you know oh I'm actually decent here I could yeah. actually do something so yeah I think it didn't really hit me until around mid-teens 
And then when you were 16, did you start to make like, you know, Warriors, Juniors? Did they have things like that then? Or was it just more, when was the first time you kind of got scouted by like an NRL franchise or NRL team? Um, I think there was a Warriors development system that I was a part of for a brief moment um, going into under my year under 17s. And um, that was that was a mad experience. You know, you had the 20s team that was like um, David Fusatua, um, Connie Harrell was there, um, all those all those boys, and yeah. um, just being a part of that and just seeing like going in the gym. Obviously, you know the gym's a big like yes. warehouse type thing, yeah, and everyone huge. everyone sees everyone, and like you're looking at the players, you're like far out. Like, this is hectic. Um, but yeah, that was probably my first time actually getting scouted, and that was late, yeah. late in my sort of rugby league life. So you got to kind of scout it, I guess, around around seventeen and. Did you play any games for the Warriors junior system or, yeah, did you play any games for the Warriors junior yeah, system? Yeah, I played a couple of trials. Yep. Um, but no but 20s games. No 20s games for the Warriors. Yep. Um, sort of left a sour mouth, a uh, sour taste in my mouth um, leaving the Warriors because, you know, I thought they wanted me mm. and then it didn't really work out and then uh, it was it was tough for me. So I just decided to stop going to those trainings and just focus on my club footy and then... Um, the Roosters um, got a hold of my manager and yeah, mad yeah. So so, how was that? Because obviously you know as you mentioned had a had a great childhood, had, a, had a, played at a family friendly club, felt love the game, love the Warriors, really you know followed the Warriors, and then you found out that Warriors, you know essentially they don't really rate you. Yeah, that was that was um, tough for me because my dad always said. I don't know why he said it to me, but it always stuck with me. It was like, if you can't make it like where you're from, like, you know, you probably not good enough. And I was like, wow. It's like, if your home team's not looking at you, like, and I was like, oh, that, that sort of sits with me. And I spoke to him about it um, a couple of years ago. I was like, dad, remember what you said to me about this? And he was like, son, that's not like this. This is a situation where it wasn't your fault. You know, you did everything right. Um, you were playing, you, were, you made Auckland, you made... New Zealand residents like it's not your fault here yeah and I was just like yeah okay I, it was still a tough pill to swallow yeah for sure definitely like you know I would love to stay home and um, play in front of my family and not smart and, and do all this and that over there but you know it, it's everything's happened for a reason to get me to where I am now 100% yeah I mean look where you are now um, so man I didn't know that thanks for sharing yeah, no, appreciate all it. Good. Um, so you know like we just mentioned, Warriors, you know, essentially said that, you know, that you're free to go elsewhere, you go back to your club, focus on your club footy, obviously excel at that age. And then uh, the Roosters come, you know, offer you a contract, mm -hmm. you end up moving to Australia. How was the move? What age did you move across to Australia? Yeah, the move was actually um, very scary for me. Um, you know, I was 17 turning 18 when I moved to the big smoke of Sydney. Um, you know, coming from a country with four million to a city of four million, it was yeah. pretty, pretty daunting. And um, but, you know, as a family dude, um, the move was primarily to make my family proud and to sort of put my family's name on the map in in some sort of way. You know, um, you know, I've got two siblings that I want to be able to look at me and be like, he didn't let anything stop him from achieving his dream, and and he could do anything. So um yeah the move was was very scary. I was a lot I was very homesick for um quite the first whole year actually that I was there. It took me a while to get used to living with other people and like another family, but um I was lucky that I had a really good homestay family. Yeah, that was my next question. So where did you move in straight away? Obviously, you know, 17 turning 18, you're obviously yeah. still a young fella. Um who did you live with? How was it? Uh first I lived with the manager of the SG ball team and um that was that was an experience. You know, I lived with Joey Manu um Perry Yawana that was at Brisbane and they were like um the, the academy and yep. obviously Joey Manu's the centre now. Yep. Um yep. so that was pretty cool. But then um I just decided to go to TAFE one day and met up with one of the other boys that was in the team and he was in the same course as me and um I went over to his house because he lived closer to the TAFE and um his family and I got along really well and they decided to take me in and um that's the Alende family from um La Perouse, that on La Perouse. Yep. So shout out to them. They've always been um, in my corner as well. And and they sort of made it so much easier, that transition from moving away from my family because they just treated me like family. You know, I was just um, an older brother to their kids and, um, you know, essentially their child that 
is not their child, you know. Yep. They, they treated me like family, and it was it was just so special for me. And I always, you know, um, try to catch up with them as much as I can. Yeah, I, I love that. And what people probably don't understand is that, like, this stuff happens all the time. Like, people, uh, players, you know, move, obviously have to move countries interstate. Like, I know we have a young, a few young fellas now who have homestays where we're, they're living with family. Mm-hmm. So, I think having that connection, mate, it is, um, it is unreal. So, how was your time uh, at the Roosters? You know, played twenties. Uh, did you play SG ball or just twenties? Played SG ball and then S- two years of twenties. Yep. So, how, how was your time at the Roosters? Yeah, that was that was an experience too. You know, you had um, guys like Jared Warra, Hargreaves. Um, Sam Moore was there um, when Sonny Bill came back to the NRL. Um, I was there and seeing seeing people like that, you know, you look up to them and you're like, far out. These are the big dogs. <laughs> um, yeah, that was just that was just amazing to be around those sort of um, players. And um, I didn't get too much involved with the NRL as I was just still pretty young. Yep. So, um, but you know, we had a few opposed sessions against them, and you know, they're they're always the older boys trying to take your heads off when you're twenties. You know, just trying to trying to do something special, but yeah, it, no, it was it was an amazing experience. So after you, your time at the Roosters, two three years at the Roosters, you decided to sign with the Cowboys. Was yeah. it a decision that I guess the Roosters were happy for you to go, or you just had a, a better offer from the Cowboys, or you had a few other offers? How did that come about? Um, well, Paul Green, my coach at the twenties for one year, was now at Cowboys, and he took um, John Asiata up there. And um, we never sort of, we didn't really speak th- about moving up there as well. But there was, excuse me, there was also there's always like talks between him and my manager. And um, yeah, they just said there's an opportunity up here at, the, at North Queensland. And um, I hadn't heard much from the Roosters at that time, so I was like, yeah, why not? Let's let's have a go. And up there, that move was that move was next level because I had no family. In Townsville, and I knew nothing about North Queensland. And <laughs> You've probably never been no, to North Queensland. I didn't North even Queensland. know North Queensland was a place. Like I didn't know Townsville. <laughs> I didn't know where it was on the map. I was just, you know, I was just like daring headlights going in there. And and I thought, you know, I thought I'd um, rock up there day one of preseason, um, and you know, try to look wear my best kit. I was in jeans and um, like you know, a bit of a, a bit of a nice shirt, and um, I get off the plane, and I'm like, "This is not the weather that I thought it was going to be." Like forty it was degrees, forty degree heat, and I'm <laughs> in jeans, sweating. I was like, "Oh, yeah, great start, great start." But now, nah, yeah, Cowboys, and yeah, that was a good move for me. Yeah, yeah. So, how did you find you know living in in North Queensland? Obviously, yeah, like you mentioned, very different to Sydney, a little yeah. bit more slow pace. Was it? I guess was it more like back home, New Zealand, as in terms of being a little bit slower. Um, did you like the fast pace of Sydney or, you know, were you pretty comfortable, you know, with the slower pace in North Queensland? Yeah, I enjoyed, I enjoyed Townsville. Um, it was, it was much more relaxed than Sydney, um, and which is what I was used to from being back home. Yep. And um, the boys there, you know, yeah, Jason Tumble, all of that is from New Zealand, so he'd understand. And there was a few other Kiwi um, boys there too. And, you know, it just made it that much easier. Um, Townsville, Townsville's really nice. I, yeah, I, I, I like see myself, yep. you know, getting a holiday house up there or something mm. like that, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I, I like Townsville a lot. I, people don't really talk much about it, but I'm like, trust me, man, yeah. it's it's actually not bad. Yeah, I, I don't mind it too either. I, I always like going there, you know, yeah. like it's, it's it's really nice, obviously, you like very warm weather. Um, Shout so out to the Mad Cow too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we spent a few good nights up yeah. there. <laughs> under the left side, under the stairs, on, that's for sure. Yeah, on the away trips. Um so how did how did you get on with Paul Green up there? Um, you know, I've heard you toss up a few stories about him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, he's, a, he's a different kind of coach. Love um, him, very passionate from very what, passionate what I understand. And very, very straightforward. Um, if you're not doing what he asked or like what he expects as a player, he'll, he'll definitely let you know. Um, I'm sure some of the people have seen his halftime sprays, um, what he does to the chairs and how he, how he talks. But, you know, that's sometimes what you need. Um, yeah, he's very, very passionate and very knowledgeable as a coach too. Um, could see him rubbing some players the wrong way, obviously, but you know, I, I never had a bad run in with him. So were you up there? You would have been up there when they won the competition. Yeah, so I was my first. That was my first year. First year, twenties. Yeah, they were. Um, they won the competition, and that was that was so massive for the town. Honestly, we us twenty boys all would decided because we kn- we got knocked out the week before the grand final yep and we just decided you know what let's just go out and see what see what's on the on the streets at flinders street and we were like wow didn't know it meant that much to the town but yeah it was just everyone was just cowboys 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 because they won the comp and it was insane to see did that motivate you being you know a, a younger 20s player seeing the town 
or seeing what it meant to the town and, and thinking, geez, I want to be a part of that one day. Did that make you, you know, want to keep going? Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Um, you know, just seeing how close you were a part of that. You know, um, you trained against the NRL team, so you sort of felt like you helped them get ready for it. Yeah, definitely. And um, you just knew that you're in a good a good club that has just won a comp, and um, not many people were leaving that year, so it was just a good cl- a good club to be a part of. And um, you definitely learnt a lot going into my first year of NRL preseason. Yeah, so, mate, you make your NRL debut up there for the Cowboys. Talk to me about the story about how the debut came about. What, uh, Who did you play against? Were you named in the team? And who told you when you found out? Yeah, so debuted against the Roosters, actually. <laughs> yeah, down, really? Yeah, down at um, Allianz. Actually, I remember that. I remember watching. Yeah, no, <laughs> and... Um, so it was like, I wasn't named, and it was out of me and um, Patrick Mago, who's now at the Rabbitohs. Yep. And um, me and him are like, we're, we're, we're really good mates. And um, we were sort of at captain's run. We were both sitting in the sort of like a, the hub, like rehab room sort of thing. And we're just like um, rolling out and stretching before captain's run. And, and Greeny comes in and the sort of, I don't know, I felt the mood drop. And I just felt everyone just go silent. I was like, oh. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I'm just like pretending that I'm not looking at him, taking notice of him. I'm just like throwing the strapping tape around, um, just trying to mind my own business. And then he goes, Braids, can I have a chat with you? I was like, oh, okay. Your heart just dropped. Yeah, <laughs> heart just dropped. And he goes, he goes um, I'm going to bring you off the bench this week. And I was like, no, oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to play cool. <laughs> just trying to play it as cool as I can. And I was like, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And um, But in my inside, I was through the roof I didn't really know what to do so he tells me before Captain John first thing I do is um, can I get flights for my parents my family to come over go get flights go home and um, I ring my parents and you know we have a big chat and they're just crying on the phone it makes yeah. me cry and I was like far out this is it, how much it means to me and my family and then um, we get to the game day my mum tells me that my dad can't come over because his passport's expired oh man and I'm just like your biggest fan Bro, oh, come on. Come on, man. Talk that out. But um, nah, he, he watched it around my uncle's house and he was just the, one of the proudest dads yeah. at the moment, at, at that moment. And um, it was it was amazing. And I played probably 20, 25 minutes against yep. the team of the Roosters and it was just so fast. Yeah. So fast. My lungs just were just, there's probably a set that you could see where I'm just not there. I'm just like <laughs> trying to breathe, <laughs> trying to get my legs moving. But yeah, it was an awesome experience. <laughs> so what did it mean to you making your NRL debut? You know, you obviously went through a heap of adversity growing up, you know, love the game, um, you know, face a, a few challenges to get to where you were to finally make your NRL debut. Did you get time to reflect after the game and think, you know, geez, I've, you know, essentially achieved my dream here. Like, you know, what did it, what did it mean to you? Yeah, it meant everything that how I'd been through was worth it, yep. you know. And um, moving to Australia. And moving to Australia. Yeah. The move, the moving from New Zealand to Sydney to Sydney to Townsville was all worth it. And everything that I'd done to that point was all worth it. And um, the the sacrifices that I had made and my family had made mm. in New Zealand were all worth it. So it just made everything feel like, you know, it was just everything was just worth it really. <laughs> and it just made m- me so proud that yeah. I had stuck through it all. Yeah, and without well. And if it wasn't for my parents, I would have moved back home years ago. Talk to me about, I guess, you know, the sacrifices that not only you've made, but the, and how hard it is because, you know, as a, a prof- professional athlete and as an NRL player, like we have to make sacrifice after sacrifice to get what we want. You yeah. know, we essentially, you know, and I don't, I guess, want to define a normal life, but, you know, in, in ways we don't live a normal life. You know, we, we don't, you know, get the same holidays. We, we do things a little bit differently. Um, so talk to me about, you know, what the, the level of sacrifice it takes to make the NRL because it's not just, you know, here or there. It's yeah, ongoing it's daily, 24/7, isn't it? 24-7. You know, yeah. um, even, even going back to New Zealand, um, there's music festivals that are going on. And, and you want to go but and enjoy yourself you know let your hair down after the season mm. but you can't because you've got to focus that you know I've got preseason coming up I've got to make sure that I'm in the best perform the best shape that I can to perform for preseason so I'm not f- too far behind and it's just every day you just got to worry about 
sort of what you're eating, what you're drinking, what you're doing, um, making sure that you're just getting enough sleep, yep. making sure that you're, you know, you, you know your role, so you got to study. Um, it's it's it takes a toll, you know, yep. and I can see why um, players can get stressed. You can see why some players aren't cut out for it. Hey? Yeah, you can see why yeah. people give up. Yep. I don't I don't like saying give up, but yeah. I just like because you know you've made the you know you you've given it a shot. Yep. and you can and that's more than a lot of people can say. Yeah. Um. I I, I always say that. Hey, you know, players will make it and players will not. Mm. If you've given it your absolute best and you've left nothing out there and have no regrets and you don't make it, well, man, you can live with that. Like, 100%. there's plenty more in life to make you happy and many other things that you can go, jump into. But if you if you half ass it and you don't attack it and you don't give it everything you got and you just, like, fade it away, it's like, well, man, what do you expect? Like, you didn't give it 100%. Yeah. You know well, that's what I mean? something like my dad said. My dad said to me, whatever you decide, if you want to, if you want to come home and, and just play footy and work, as a family, we will support you 100%. But we don't want you to come home, watch a game of footy, and say to yourself or say to us, man, those guys were training. I was training with those guys. That, mm. that could have been me. Yeah. I don't, want you, I don't want you to regret your decision to come home. And he goes, I know you will regret it because I know you're not done there. And, and that has stuck with me throughout my whole career. That stuck with me from 20s to now that, you know, I, I, would, I would have regr regretted it if I did move. And, that, and I'm so glad that he didn't. Is that the best bit of advice your old man's given you? Yeah, hundred percent. I reckon it's probably one of the best pieces of advice anyone has. Yep. You know, um, you say you say live life with no regrets, but there's some things that you know that were just not the right decision, and it was just the heat of the moment thing that I wanted to go home. Obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I'm so glad that he, you know, drilled that into my head that you would have been upset with yourself, and that's just stuck with me ever since. All right, so after the Cowboys, you are off contract at the end of 2017. Yep. And talk to me then. You're off contract. You've got a, a few offers. Yep. Um, who did you have off, who'd you have offers from? Was it just the Sharks? Was there a few others? And um, what led you to the decision to sign with the Sharks? I think there was the Sharks. Might have been the Bulldogs as well, I'm, I think. I'm not too sure, actually. But I know the Sharks was the main one. Yep. Um, and I come down for a sneaky little look around um, when I had a buy up there. I come down for a sneaky little look around. You catch up with Flano? Yeah, I saw Flano, <laughs> saw Ange met Andrew Gray. Yeah, that, um, that's what saw, Toby said to yeah. me. <laughs> saw Andrew Gray and um, did an in body. I was yeah, like, right. oh, I didn't know if I want to come in. I yeah, yeah. to do those. But um, yeah. yeah, and I loved it. Eh? I got driven around um, the Shire and, and just absolutely loved the place. Yep. I was like, wow, this is, this is sick. Like how how does no one want to come down here and play for these guys? This is a sick place. Like it's a beach right there. Yeah, everything's right there. That's you. Like yeah. And um yeah, I just decided. Um, Flano just said that there was a an opportunity down here. They were letting a um, couple of people go, yep. and um you know just come down and give you a best shot. And I was like, yeah, sweet, because I always knew that I wanted to eventually go back to Sydney or New Zealand. Yep. And um it was just so happened that the Sharks wanted me, and yeah. So you come down, uh, spend your first preseason or first season here at the Sharks in 2018, which was a pretty successful year for us. Yep. Um, make your you make your club the boo for the Sharks against the Raiders. You yeah. and Jackie Williams, yeah. your, your brother, at the same time. But talk me through about that. How did you find coming into the Sharks at the time? Were you um, did you feel like you slotted in straight away? Did it take you time to adjust back into Sydney? How was that? I thought it was pretty easy. Yep. Um, I thought coming down here, the boys were so welcoming and. Um, the coaching staff was so welcoming and everyone just, you know, um, made it that much easier. Um, I thought, you know, I thought the boys that um, were there were really like the pinnacle. <laughs> you know, you had, Lu you had Louis there, you yeah, had Gelza, yeah, yeah. Prizcat, yeah. um, Fifter, you, yourself. Um, Jimmy was there. But yep. he, Jimmy had obviously left before I got there. But um, yep. yeah, you had guys like that. And I was just like, this is, I was like, this is another massive moment for me. Like, I, I still got, I, I got, like star struck when I first got here I was like far out I'm at, I'm at the Sharks <laughs> and um, it didn't help when you let me on the 1.2 the first day <laughs> either um, I, got, I got finessed there a lot oh, oh. I don't know why I tried to go out so hard but um, <laughs> no nah, it was yeah, it was such an easy transition because I knew I knew what to expect you know coming into another NRL system I knew that yeah this is going to be hard um, but as long as you give it all yeah for sure so 
you um I'll just touch on your, your club de boo, but you know, you when it was time for your club de boo, again, how how'd you find out? Uh were you in the team list or how was how was that? How um, about? Nah, I wasn't in the team list. I found it in the hotel room because Boogs got sick, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think Boogs got sick and um just found out when they're having a team meeting. Um that was that was cool. Um yeah. just to play another NRL game. Yep. Um personally I don't think I was in the best shape. You know, it was late in the season and, and as a as someone that has stopped playing, you know, you just yep. sort of start to relax a little bit. Um, but you know, I don't think I played a, a, a bad game. I don't think it was the best game that I could have played. Yep. Um, but yeah, again, another experience. Um, being part of Jackie's um, NRL debut was something special for me because we were roommates at the time, and yep. um, yeah, it was just it was just cool to play another game. Definitely. So you had that uh, one game in 2018, uh, again, a part of your, your progression, and then um, back up into next year, into 2019, and you're off contract as well at the end of 2019. Mm-hmm. 2019 was your breakout year. That's when you know you really came on. You had a really good preseason. You were fit. You were strong. Uh, you were looking so good. You come out. I mean, what was different for you in 2019 compared I to think, any other year? Yeah, I think the – the realization of not having anything at the end of the year, and um, and not achieving or not giving it my my all, um, I thought that you know if I wanted to do something, I'd have to do it now. This year, this year is the year for me. And um, yeah, I just woke up one day and just decided to just because it was after that that year was the sailing club accident. Yep, the incident, and I was like, oh, I've literally done nothing. If I go home now, I'm I'm I can't talk about anything because I've done nothing. Mm. In my opinion, I've done nothing. So if I go home, everyone's just be like, oh, failure. Like, you yeah. failed. Yep. I didn't want that. And I wanted to actually, like, give it a crack. So after that incident, just decided to rip in and, and give it my all and then got another opportunity against the Roosters back at Shark Park and never looked back. So just quickly, we'll touch on that sailing club incident. It was that was at the end of tw- uh, twenty eighteen, wasn't it? That in was the it. Break? Preseason, yeah. The preseason, just before the day before the Christmas break. Yeah, day before Christmas break, and we're down at the sailing club, and a bit of an incident happened. What yeah. what happened? Yeah, um, I'm gonna name drop him because he deserves it. <laughs> um, Ava, <laughs> Ava Simon Fangai, the big seal. Yeah, the big seal, the bloke that ran to the opposite side of the field. <laughs> um, he he, I saw him get king hit. So I thought, yep, because we uh, had, it was the end of season, end of, uh, season. End, end of you know Christmas drinks, mm-hmm. end of preseason. We're all out having yeah. a, a good time together. Yeah. There was a lot of us there too, yeah. wasn't it? I think yep. the whole team, like majority of the team, was there. Yep. And um, I just see him get dropped, and I was like, oh, I better help out here, and I'm not mm-hmm. gonna not do anything. Yeah. Obviously, it wasn't the best decision to go in and like you know. But you wanted to stick up for yeah, your mate. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yep. And we were always taught, you know, don't leave, like don't be that guy that doesn't help out. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, just um, end up having a fight with a few. Never seen them again after that day. Yeah, um, a few people in the sailing club, and it, it really, you know, put the club in a bad way. Um, I acknowledge that now that probably wasn't the best way to handle it. But what else could you do? Like, yeah, yeah, like you know, you weren't, I- you never had intention to start anything. But nah. at the end of the day, you wanted to stand up and stick up for your mate who'd just been king hit. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And um, knowing of, he probably deserved it now. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, saying what I you know like saying that I wouldn't second guess it again. Yeah, it's probably not the right thing to say. But yep, yep. you know, I see the team as my brothers. Mm-hmm. You know, you go through every day. You see every um, everyone every day. You're training you, you literally, yeah. you know, you you boys know we know each other more than probably anyone. Definitely, apart from partners and kids, and um. You know, I'd do that for anyone, really. Yep, you know, yep, so yep. I wouldn't second guess it. So what happened after that? Did you get uh, punished? Did you get fired? Did you get suspended? How how did it all go down? So it was a day before Christmas break before I flew out to New Zealand. And I had phone calls with the, the um, with Barry, Barry Russell and um, Shane Smith. And um, if you've ever wanted head noise, if you ever wanted to know what head noise was over a two-week Christmas break... <laughs> Just come and ask me because I'll tell you. <laughs> um, that Christmas break wasn't as enjoyable as, uh, as yeah. I wanted it to be. Yeah, it probably um, would have been all in your mind. Oh, it was I. It was just knowing what I was coming back to, um, having to go to the police station and, and yeah. give statements and knowing that I could essentially be sacked. 
um, was was pretty daunting. But I came back, um, had a meeting with the board, um, didn't lose my job, but did get a pretty big fine. Um, I think twelve and a half percent of my salary was deducted. Wow! And um, yeah, that's pretty big, man. Been banned from the sailing club for five years, apparently. Jeez. Yeah. So after that incident, that was kind of the incident that you were like, hey, this is now a chance for me. I can either go, I can really learn from this incident. Yep. Like while I regret the decision, I would stick up for my one of my good mates. Mm -hmm. um, had I had my time again, I would do things probably a little bit differently. Now I've got to really just focus on my footy, knuckle down and, and, and get fit. So you mentioned before about you, you learning from that and that really pushed you in to have the breakout season in 2019. Yeah, yeah. Um you know, I got a, I got a message. There was one day that I, you know, I always remember from Scotty Sorrenton. Um, we were doing gym, and he must have said, he must have seen something, and um, he messaged me after training. He said, "Mate, after everything that's happened, you've been training the house down, and it's so good to see." And getting um, recognition from your teammates, yeah, after something, you know, and th them recognizing that you're actually putting in the work was actually pretty cool. And um, I just decided that, you know, this is, I want to do this. I, I've got to, I've got to go here. And then played a few games in a row, and I was like, okay, this is what it feels like. This is what regular NRL feels like. <laughs> yes. I like this. I like this a lot. You weren't only playing a few games. You were bloody killing it. You were scoring <laughs> tries left, right, and center. Obviously, these sprays are scoring tries, like doing the bloody yeah. uh, the, um, the double elbows. The double elbow yeah. celebration, mate. We were having a good time that year, yeah. 29. It we, was we, so fun. We had a great team. We had fun. We were um, scoring tries. Like we were celebrating tries. Yeah, everything. Um, Mate, that was, yeah, uh, that was a, a definitely a, a highlight uh, for me. So that brings you into the, the um, like I said, you're off contract in 2019. So um, you decide to re-sign with the Sharks for three years. But yep. un from what I understand, there was, again, um, some significant interest from, from other teams, most notably the New Zealand Warriors. But how close were you to going back to the Warriors? You just mentioned before that, you know, you could see yourself playing for the Warriors. Yep. Yeah, how close were you? Yeah, I was actually... About to like say yeah I'll come, uh, about to like you know verbally agree, but um, I always talk back with my parents about you know where I'm at, um, and they just said look I don't think you're ready to come home. And I was like yeah I'm not. I love New Zealand and I love um the place. I love home, but I love home right now for holidays. Yep. I love going back there and just you know dipping my toe back in New Zealand culture. You know I love yep. just doing it as a holiday. Um. Yeah, who knows what happens in the future? You know, I could yeah. um, go back there, um, but I'm loving playing for the Cronulla Sharks. So you do know? you feel that staying here in Sydney or at the Sharks allows you to be like, hey, I'm here for work. I'm here to focus on yeah. my career, really knuckle in and train where going back to New Zealand, you know, potentially would have been able to, you know, relax at home, you know, maybe fall into some old habits, things like that. Was that a f is that a fair comment? 100%. Yep. That's, that's probably the main reason why I didn't is yep. because – you know, I that's knew, a brave decision, man. I knew that if I went back, I was just gonna, I wouldn't say automatically just jump back into old habits, but they'd yeah. definitely yep. creep in. You yep. know, you're going back with childhood friends that are there, and um, they're they're on the same, they're on a different wavelength wavelength as you. Yep. They've, they've got the jobs, the nine to five, and they always want to, you know, go out for a drink after that. And you're just like, oh, I can't. But you know, we're one, here. One, like your mates, here, yeah. your mates are all Footy your mates. teammates. Yeah. You know, they're and on the gross. same. They're on the same wavelength as you. Yeah. They're doing. They've got the same sacrifices. The ca the same training schedule. Yeah. You know, you hang out, do the same things on the weekends, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, I, yeah, I applaud that decision, bro. It's a brave, brave decision. Um, again, you know, the, the 2019 season for you just keeps on getting better. At the end of the year, uh, you've just re-signed with the Sharks for, for, for three years, um, and then you make your Kiwi test debut, brother. Um, I remember when I found out, I was so bloody oh. stoked. I was going through the roof. How how were you when you found out? Who, who told you? Uh, Madge. Madge actually told me. Michael Maguire actually told me. Um, yeah. We were, were in the gym um, down the in, in Western Sydney, and um, yeah, I was in the chin-up bar, I was in the chin-ups, and then he goes, Braids, um, I want you to come off the bench for us this week. And I was like, Bro. again, again, I was, but I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't this time. I couldn't this time. I was just, yeah. holy cow, like, this is insane. Like, I'm playing it for my country. You to tears. Oh, yeah. it did. Um, I told my parents straight away, and um, dad's passport wasn't expired this time. <laughs> yeah, how good is that? Um, yeah, and that whole, that whole four, because I was there for four weeks. I was supposed to play the nines, but yeah, yep. um, strained my calf. Yeah. 
and then um, played the game against the Aussies in Wollongong. And, um, you know, just doing the haka was something yeah. so insanely powerful. Um, and then before that, though, the national anthem was crazy. I, I was able to find my dad in the crowd. Sick. And um, just looked at him and I could just see, you know, tears coming into his eyes and yeah. it made me cry. And it was yeah, just yeah. such an emotional experience and it was crazy. Man, that's unreal. You'll never, never, ever forget that moment, mate. Oh, I love hearing that. So, how was the game? How was your? How was you? You come off the bench. Yeah, come off the bench. I uh, remember your first carry. You remember Rank. you were playing it. You were playing it at Wollongong. Wool- Wool- yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. watching. Yeah, yeah. Playing first carry, <laughs> drop the ball. Great start. <laughs> Far out. Honestly, um, yeah. But I've never played in a game faster. Yeah. Um, you're playing world class. You're playing with and against world class players, mm. and um, they had. Boys coming off a massive years. They had Payne Haas as a as the bench player as well. Yep. Um and you know, he's a big, big player too. And um they had Tedesco and everyone like that. And I managed to the moment that I'm proud of is that I didn't give up on a tie up from Mark and make Tedesco drop the ball. Yeah. That's that's the only thing that just um, did your job. Yeah. yeah, just did my job. Oh, and yeah. I was like, oh, that's crazy. And um I probably only played twenty five to thirty minutes. Yep. But nothing like the drop ball didn't matter to me yeah you know um of course i was disappointed in the game i yep. thought you know i had been given such a massive opportunity and i didn't give it every i didn't fulfill it as much as i wanted to but i'm still not going to say that definitely i'm upset with the game because i played for my country definitely you know? like what how many people can say that getting there getting there the journey is, yeah is exactly. the most important thing 100% mate um, all right. After after twenty nineteen, like I said, you finished with uh, a, a black jersey debut, and then they move into twenty twenty, which was probably one of the toughest years for all of us. Yeah. Um, everyone's obviously been through some some form of hardship throughout the last twelve months, um, and obviously with us, you know, we had the NRL bubble. Um, talk to me about your experiences with the bubble because I know uh, you know you decided to share a few things on social media um, where you would you know journal and write your thoughts down and just be open and, and vulnerable um, were you going through a bit of a tough time and how did you feel that you know being vulnerable helped you yeah uh, personally it was probably the toughest time for me um, being away from my family and confined to four walls was tough it allowed me to and like, like I'm a I overthink a lot, you know. I I don't as much now, but I used to, and um, I used to think the worst of scenarios. And um, it was tough for me. Um, it was I made that video that I chucked up. Yep. Um, just to, you know, it was it was a tough time for everyone, but I didn't see too many people acknowledging that it was tough. Yeah. Like, um, I know it's a hard topic to talk about, but I hope. Like, you know, making that video allowed people... I got so many... I got so much feedback saying, this is making it comfortable yeah. for me to talk about my hard times. And I was like, that's that's what I wanted it for. Like, it wasn't for me to say that I'm going to be vulnerable for, mm. you know, the world to see. I wanted it to make sure that people were going to be able to share mm. um, because... Did you feel that uh, when you made that video? Because I remember, like, a lot of the boys got around it and shared it as well. I'm like, yeah. bro, this is awesome. Like, I honestly didn't think it was going to be like that. How was that when you found out that you, all your teammates were sharing the it video and being like, bro, this is sick? It was real overwhelming because I didn't expect the feedback to be like that. I thought, you know, people were going to look at me and be like, oh, this guy's just doing it to do it. Like, he doesn't mean this, blah, 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 blah. Yep. But to see the boys share it and, and comment and, and, uh, and everything like that, and to see on other people's stories that I haven't even met before, yeah, it was it was it was really really cool, and um, I'm just glad that it had that effect on people. Yeah, I uh, think I last year was massive for me to learn about myself, yep. and I definitely think it carried onto the field. Definitely, one hundred percent. I'll um I'll I'll touch on the NRL bubble quickly, and you know, for myself, I'm lucky. I've obviously yeah, you know, I've got a wife and some children to come home to, but yourself, you know, you live in 2020 you lived by yourself yeah. so you said you spoke about being confined to four walls so we were only ever as many people know allowed to go to training and, and back, back home. home so you know what did you do with your time at home you know you said you were an overthinker was um you know <laughs> going home and not having human interaction yeah, at hard. home for like 12 hours yeah from like f- let's say four o'clock till you go to bed yeah it was really really hard i i didn't do much honestly um, I read a couple. Bo- I decided I, f- I like reading, so I, yep. I read a couple books, and um, I just really got into my journaling and writing out 
what was on my mind and everything like that. Yeah. And um, I got in touch with the club psychologist that was available to us, and yep. I made use of that every second week. I think it was sick. And that was, you know, someone that grew up thinking men men don't need psychologists. Yeah. You know, you you should you know harden up. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was massive a massive step for me. Did you find that? Um, you know, I touched on being, you know, being vulnerable, and you know, you learnt now. You were like, man, I learnt so much about myself in twenty twenty. Yeah, hundred percent. I learned that it's okay to be not okay. Yep. You know, people people will always look at you and say, oh, people won't always look at you, but they'll they'll be like, oh, you know, this guy's down, but that's fine. Mm. Like, you know, the the ones to acknowledge that they're down are the ones that make the biggest progress because they acknowledge that they're down, they can find out these steps to help them through it, yep. and then they can come out the other side, and you know everyone's going to have a down day here or there. It's about how you learn to get through it. And the recovery time for me was, you know, it might have been four days, and then three days, and then two days, and then eventually it was just one day, and then not even an hour, because I had learned tools throughout those losses yeah. or those bad days to yep. be able to just not, like nip it in the bud right there. And not allow myself to feel that way for that long, but yeah, I, I learned a lot about myself. Love that. What uh, what books you read? Um, anything really. Um, I got onto one called How Emotions Are Made. Yep. And I gave it to Royce. Um, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know he could read. <laughs> uh, I didn't know he could read at all. Has he read it? I don't know. He's actually actually come back with some feedback um after a few chapters. Yeah, good. So I was like, wow, that's, that's cool. I rate that. Yeah, I read it too. I was like, far. He he actually just asked me for it. I was like, oh yes, yeah, yeah. I'll bring it. Yeah, sick. Um, read that one. I read uh, like a fiction book. Uh, yeah. Wait, what's the truth? What's the real one? And also, uh, oh man, non-fiction non is the non-fiction. Is that false? It's false. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so I read a book about that one. Yeah. Called the Book Thief. Yeah. And that was crazy. That was just about um, this little girl um, back in times where Hitler was man. Yeah. And um, and I've read one called Australia Day, which just touched on. Um, the indigenous point of view of Australia Day and yep, what it yep. means. I remember you telling me about that actually. Yeah, it was yep. it's actually a pretty good book. Yep. Um, and then I think that was it. Yeah, I think three, three's, three's a lot for me. Yeah, still got a process. Definitely, man. Especially like a lot of us, yeah, you know, we struggle to sit still in school and focus. Yeah, and, you know, I'm not only exactly the same. I've only started reading probably a bit seriously over the last few years, but yeah. now, you know, I, I love it. I try and put it in my daily routine. Yeah, yeah, know, and, I, and I love hearing that my teammates are like investing time into themselves to read books. Um, I definitely, you know, promote that stuff. All right, a few questions to go. Um, Braids, what does Braden do in his spare time? Uh, I like to give my brothers lessons on how to play Madden. Yeah, um, I've got, I've had, a, I've got a sixty-five fifteen win over my brother <laughs> last night. So. <laughs> Um, so just quickly, your brothers uh, this year have yep. only just recently come over and decided to live in Australia, yep. and they're living with you. That's right, hey. Yeah, yeah. Yep. They they decided to just come over and get. So out why of why why they decide that? Uh, they just wanted to give it a crack. Really, they weren't signed anywhere. Yep. Um, they just thought that they were over being stagnant in the um, Premier level at, in rugby league over there. Yep. They thought they were worthy of, um, or like, like you know, they thought they were good enough to come over here and give it a crack. And um, from all the feedback that I've got from Newtown, they, the boys are going good, and um, they've got another trial tomorrow out of Blacktown, so be out there to watch them. Yep. And um, yep. hopefully, they don't waste my gas money. <laughs> Cause I said that to them last time. You've got them under your wing now, don't oh, you? Yeah, they're they're <laughs> down in my wing. They do all the <laughs> housework and stuff like that. It's gross. <laughs> um, talk to me quickly about gaming because I know there's a fair few keen gamers yeah, in, yeah. in our squad that um, like to, to do that at home in, the, in their spare time, mate. And, and I love it. I love hearing about you boys talk about it. You know, I guess it's another form of bonding with our yeah. teammates. Um, talk to me a bit about gaming. Yeah, I reckon it's mad. Um, you know, there's a, there's a, there used to be a massive crew. There used to be 12 of us that used to play. But now that Shawnee's had a baby, um, he sort of dips in whenever he, need, whenever he can. Um, but, um, yeah, it's, it's really mostly... Nowadays, it's me, Dan Vaz, Dan Vasquez, um, both the Jack Williams and Doogie. Yep. And um, um, Ma, Mawene, yep. jumps on a fair bit, and um, C as well, Shona Katoa. And um, we just, I think it's just a way to just, you come you come home after training, um, you catch up with what you what you need to do, and it's just another time to just, you know, relax and just wind down, yep. I feel. People think, oh, you're playing, you're playing Call of Duty, like, aren't you going to be like, full of adrenaline? I'm like, bro... 
that's the opposite. Yeah, it just yeah. relaxes me and like, you know, yeah. I get away from everything, you know, all the outside noise for a little bit. You know, the boys just um, get on there and we just talk about anything. We just talk about crap. And it's just like yeah, everyone's yeah. laughing and joking and playing. So I always hear about you telling about stories in, in, this Honestly. in the sheds. And I, and I absolutely love it. Uh, all right. What I asked, uh, actually asked Toby Rudolph his question. What does Braden think of during fitness when it's extremely hard? Yeah, I try to think about how to breathe. <laughs> um, I'm usually there, my mouth's open. I'm, I'm not really thinking much, but how to breathe. I know that when I'm fatigued, I have to go in the mouth, out the mouth, and in the nose, out the mouth, whatever. Blah, yeah, blah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's either that or there's mental battles with the demons that I'm fighting. Yeah, there, yeah. There's big demons some days. Yeah. I mean, Everyone fights them. Tuesday, Tuesday, there was massive <laughs> demons during those bloody 2040s, 60s. There were huge yeah. demons. Um, that's uh, yeah, but most of them I'm just thinking about how to breathe. Yeah. All right. Beauty. Uh, what would Braden Ueli be doing if he wasn't playing footy? Probably something um, on the sides of guidance counselling or just like. Um, yeah, sort of something like that, like being a guidance counsellor or counsellor back home. Yep, yep. Um, I know for sure that after footy's done, I want to go back home and do that. Yep. So, um, yeah, I'll probably... And you're and studying that now, aren't yeah, you, yeah, at the moment? Studying, Tell um, me a bit about that. Diploma of counselling yep. with um, a few of the other boys. Um, and it's probably the f the only first and only course that I've actually stayed in and wanted to do a lot. Um, it's just, you just see young, young people these days and people, or even older people these days, they don't know how to deal with problems and they don't know how to talk about it and they don't have anyone to talk about it and I want to be able to you know be that person for someone back home um especially in the minority the communities of minorities you know Pacific Island Maori kids yep. um they get forgotten about yep. and it's it's not fair um I want to go back and invest in them because there's so much talent mm. you know you, there's there's so much talent whether they're sports stars whether they're doctors um, musicians, anything like that, they can be those things. Yeah, if someone will suggest, guide them and help them out. Yep, yep. And um, and I feel like, just quickly on, I guess the the Polynesian, uh, you know, they're a bit quieter. You know, yeah, they're not, they're not one. They're not people to, I guess, put themselves out there. Is that yeah? A they're not reflection. Like yeah, you know, you've grown you've grown up in a in a culture that doesn't really necessarily identify mental mental health issues as an issue yep um i never did i never thought mental health issues could happen to me because oh I, that doesn't happen in my head like yeah, i don't yeah. hear this i don't hear this yep. that yep. but yeah yeah it does it does happen and the more we can bring it out into the open the better our, our young kids will be our younger generations will be because they'll go and ask for help and they won't be lost and they won't want to you know end it all because they've got that help and those tools to help yeah so that's what i want to try to do back home a bit more i love that bro i love that what's Braden newelli's favorite food <laughs> what isn't um, <laughs> honestly i'd have to go pizza pizza is my favorite food. pizza yeah pizza any um, type of pizza the there's one from crust pizza the chicken i think it's the Peri peri chicken. Peri peri chicken. Yeah, 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 nice with bro. a bit of um, yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, goes yeah. pretty good. That bangs pretty hard. I like it. Yeah, beauty. I love that. Who is your favorite athlete in the world? Yeah, that's a hard question for me. Um, but I'm you can't go past LeBron or um Tom Brady, in yeah. my opinion. There's so many good ones. Oh, eh? there's so many good ones. Yeah. Even um, back in the olden days, Bo Jackson. Yeah. Was, um, I love watching stuff on him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, could have been an Olympic sprinter. Yeah, decided to play NFL and then went to play baseball and killed it. <laughs> yeah. Like, how many people can do that? And threw it from the from from the outside from the outfield, sorry, to third base. Yeah, yeah, and one yeah. not even a bounce. Yeah. Like the guy's a freak. But nowadays, and like when I was growing up, it would it would have been LeBron or um, Tom Brady. You can't go past seven rings, and you can't go past yeah. what LeBron's done in basketball. 100%. In my opinion. Definitely. All right. Last question today is: If you could play another sport, what would it be? Um, honestly, um, it would probably be American football, NFL. All right. Yeah. If I could do what some of those guys do, yeah. I would 100%. Bro, have you seen Jordan, what Jordan Mulata's done? Yeah, I've seen that. It's crazy. Impressive, man. Man, he got his debut game this year. And he, he played a heap of games, man. He played really well. He was playing and with the ones for ages. That's it's so good to see, you know. Yeah. He's at South Sydney Rabbitohs and yep. just 
but I'm seeing what he could do, and it opens another door for young poly kids that want to play NFL. 100%. You know, he, he didn't know what the game was at all, and he's just done that. It's, yeah. it's crazy to see, and I hope he gets um, a lot more games under his belt. Yeah. All right, Braves, mate. Thank you so much for coming on today. Appreciate brother. having me, Chatty. All right, guys, that's it uh, for today's episode with Braden Hamlin Ueli. Uh, make sure you check out the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, and you can watch it on YouTube. We'll see you on the next episode. Yo. Peace.